before that, we've had a bit of fun with our writers and our FC contributors. And you have the league table. It's all there. It's set in stone. However, when we mix in some form, when we mix in some fixtures, and when we mix in some recent games, we asked our two... Messrs. Ryan and Bill to come up with a more accurate league table if it's based on what is happening now. So I've done my best to try and describe it, probably not very well. I want to start with you, Ryan. What was the uh, the remit that you were given by the FC bosses <laughs> for you and Bill to come up with? Uh, basically, the, the way I would describe it is if in the near future any of these teams played at a neutral field, who do we think should be favored in the game? Oh, okay. um, so I guess that a little bit includes injuries, but um, you know, it, it's mainly as of right now, who is the best team in the league? Who is the second best team in the league? Who is the third best team in the league, et cetera. So, you know, some of it is in um, recent form. Like I said, some of it is injuries. Um, a lot of it is, me and Bill like to look at the underlying uh, yeah. metric of the team's performance. So it's it's a combination of all of those. Bill, who's number one? <laughs> this is my fault. So um, it is uh, good to ask me this question. It's Arsenal. Um, I They're just the best team right now. They, they have the best underlying stats, as Ryan said. Uh, their form is excellent. I, I was taken aback by the Brighton game last weekend. Obviously, Brighton's not, uh, you know, top four caliber at the uh, at the moment, but just the way they were able to do their things well and then do Brighton's things better than Brighton uh, was was a pretty jarring combination. And I, I I think they're the best team in the Premier League. How, how you know, near future is is carrying a lot of weight here because I, I know we, we just assume that at some point Manchester City becomes that team uh, again in the future. But right now and, and for the next couple of weeks, at least, I would say it's probably Arsenal. OK, Janish, Manchester City and Liverpool are joint second in the table. You and I have discussed a fair bit about Manchester City and how they'll look a little bit different with Kevin De Bruyne back, with Erling Haaland fit. But right now, would you agree that Arsenal are playing the best of anybody in the Premier League? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, as I've said before, all the ingredients uh, for a team like Arsenal are in. Everything that we used to question uh, no longer can be questioned. Uh, 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 last season, they were close, but I think we knew by virtue of not playing against each other in the first uh, half of the season that we better wait to see what happens. And and I think uh, we were right uh, because uh, Obviously, Arsenal lost to Manchester City twice or three times uh, in a cup as well. So um, this time you have the best defense uh, in the league. Uh, uh, you have you have a spine, a structure. You have arguably one of the best uh, uh, managers in the world, uh, right? Uh, the character is very, very important. Uh, I mentioned the other day, I think, to you, Mark, right? I mean, when was the last time we've mentioned Patrick Vieira? Uh, sure. We don't because we don't have to because Declan Rice, uh, even in our last game against uh, uh, Brighton, I thought he was uh, incredible. Not just good, incredible. Uh, so I think when you look at everything uh, everything around, you can say that they're, they're legitimate contenders this time. Now, of course, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what may happen. But last year, I never, ever felt once uh, uh, like I could say that Arsenal are contenders. Uh, mm -hmm. And this year, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, last season, for example, they had that experience. Maybe this season, they'll know what to do better. The bottom line is, Manchester City have been over the course and distance before, and they've won. Liverpool have done so as well. Arsenal haven't. So that's something that they have to take from last season. So, boys, you have Arsenal at the top. You have Sheffield United at the bottom. The one thing, well, there are many things, but one in particular I wanted to speak to you about was your placement of Everton. Ryan, you've got them sixth. <laughs> Why so high? I mean, they're... Uh... Like I, I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna say some crazy stuff about Sean Dyche and how right away uh, in the list of like the best managers in the world because Everton have no money to spend. They were horrible last year. This year they would be uh, tied with Brighton if they didn't have the points deduction, and their underlying numbers are significantly better. They're um, six best in expected goal differential, um, non penalty expected goal differential, which is a pretty good indicator of overall quality and yeah they're <laughs> like it like we said we were trying to be kind of as objective as possible 
And, you know, when you look at the teams ahead of them, we've got Arsenal, City, Liverpool, Villa, and Newcastle. And yet, like, I'm not, I don't think anyone else in a neutral field, in my opinion, should be favored over Everton right now if they play, which is a wild thing to say. But the way that they're playing um, under Deitch, like, they're just, you know, they're creating so many chances, um, so many more than you would expect from a kind of what we what we saw from Deitch at, at Burnley. But yeah, it, it's a it's a wild transformation. And I think it is a little bit overshadowed by the points deduction, but without the points deduction, without a, with a little more luck, Everton's like on the verge of fighting for fifth, in my opinion. <laughs> Part of my job is to be that annoying little brother that pokes holes in arguments and says, you'd have Everton favorites in a neutral venue over most of the teams below them. You've got Everton sixth, you've got Manchester United 10th. And if I remember rightly, Manchester United went to Goodison <laughs> rather recently and did a number on Everton. So there are maybe one or two holes in that argument. <laughs> well, I think that game was Everton played like we would expect Manchester United to play to and Manchester United played like we would expect Everton to play to. Everton completely dominated the shot count in that game. And I think they were really unlucky to not draw or at least win. And, you know, so with these rankings, we're putting a little more um, or a lot more credence on kind of the performance rather than the results. So yes, man, you got the result, but I think by performance uh, kind of dominating the flow of the game, Everton did that against mm -hmm. Man U. Bill, Manchester United 10th just also <laughs> runs. Is, is, seriously, is that is that what they are right now? Because they're becoming very difficult to try and predict. When you think they're going to lose, they win. When you think they're <laughs> going to win, they lose. So so is this who they are right now? As this kind of table suggests, that they're, they're kind of they're there or thereabouts. They're 10th. They're not any higher, not any lower. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you if you think of them as the the midway point in the uh, in the league overall, it kind of makes sense that they have a pretty broad range of outcomes. But yeah, they're just not. I, I don't think they know what they are at the moment. I think that's pretty clear. Really, their defense is is very 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 porous. The you know they they've probably been a, a little bit unlucky from a finishing standpoint. Uh, that's hurt them at random times. But, uh, you know, as we saw with them getting just ripped to shreds constantly in the Champions League, this is a, a very, very poor defense. Uh, when he, when he uh, you know, as with against Liverpool the other day, uh, obviously they were a little lucky not to give up a goal with 30 whatever shots. But um, they still, like, when they burrow in and try to uh, put everything into not allow it a goal. They also don't create anything uh, beyond that hardly. And it's just the balance isn't there. The, the, the identity isn't there. We're, you know, we're mm -hmm. talking about Everton. We know Everton knows what it is. Um, and Manchester United has no idea what it is right now. And it's pretty evident. Yeah, and it's just far, as far as the league table, the actual league table is concerned, the boys have done theirs based on a variety of factors. Yanish, if you can give me two teams, one who is significantly overperforming this season and one who is significantly underperforming, what two teams would you give me in the actual league table? Well, I mean, you have to you have to give uh, Everton as overperforming. I mean, not 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 a shock to me, uh, really. I mean, Sean Dyche, uh, Mark, you know, I mean, I love my Sean Dyche. I mean, this is this is Burnley on steroids, isn't it? Right. I mean, it, it, you know, the reason it's a little bit better and the team plays differently is because obviously there's a little uh, more quality. But if if you think back to the best times of of Burnley, and remember, I think he got him to Europe, didn't he? Uh, one season it was the Twin Towers, uh, Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes, and and some of his sh soldiers, right? And those soldiers. Soldiers, and this is very important I'm with him at Everton, right? Because if you look at James Tarkovsky, I mean, how important is he uh, to Sean Dyche and Everton? Massive. I mean, he blocks everything. I have I have expect him to block this on one of these days because it's incredible. Dwight O'Neill on one side, getting Jack Harrison on the other. And that physicality that he always demands from his teams, uh, from Burnley, is still here, right? Because if you if you look at not just the size, but the quality of Onana and the Cora, you can sort of almost envision Burnley with a lot more quality which is, of course, that of uh, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well. So that's that's one team. The underperformance, quite honestly, and, and I'm not going to go look like lower and lower, is Chelsea because that team is much, much better. I mean, you can almost marry Chelsea to Manchester United. And they will rise simply because, simply because you know, now there's going to be a tension on the top teams. They're going to be fighting in, amongst each other. Manchester uh, United and Chelsea are going to be getting their players back. And there's so much quality there. As I think one of the guys mentioned, uh, you know, maybe not the idea of how to play just yet because how can you do that when you have half the team out, right? You may have ideas yeah. ahead of 
who's going to be playing with whom. And by the way, I'm not throwing this out as an excuse, but that's the fact of life. Uh, but these players are going to come back, and that quality is going to show itself. So towards the end of the season, you're going to see both Chelsea and Manchester United being up there in you know fifth, sixth, seventh place, and and it's going to be business as usual. That that will never change in the Premier League, at least not in the foreseeable future. Bill, this is something you do every month, and something that I noticed, and it kind of mirrored real life was that Aston Villa were seventh in your November rankings and they moved up to fourth in this one. And today, I mean, we're recording this live Friday lunchtime, Eastern time in the US and 5 p.m. in the United Kingdom. Aston Villa can go top of the table if they win tonight at home to Sheffield United. So can you give us a kind of early insight into what you're thinking about for potentially your next rankings and how high could Aston Villa actually get here? Yeah, it's they, they are probably running hot a little bit from a finishing standpoint and have been for a little while. I mean, but they've been kind of overachieving their underlying stats for a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, some of that's probably real. It's it's hard for me to picture thinking of them as genuinely better than Arsenal City or Liverpool at any point. So maybe in terms of power rankings, fourth is as high as they can get. Um, but, but a fourth is really high. Um, e even if they're a little higher in the table at one point or another, um, considering, you know, recent history as a whole fourth place be being genuinely the fourth best team in the premier league is, is just a, 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 a thing that I'm not used to yet. Let's put it that way. Uh, and, and I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really curious how long this can run because yeah, we I can point to statistical overachievement and this and that they just look like a top four, top five team. And, uh, and obviously they might be even higher than that in the table soon.